Well, good morning, St. John's Northwest, all the way in Houston, Texas. This is Bishop Julia McMillan. I am delighted to be with you today. To my friend, Pastor Connie C.J. Jackson, happy third anniversary. Thank you all so much for your kindness and your kind words introducing me. I am blessed of the Lord to be with you, if but by virtual. I am so thankful that in this praise party in the parking lot right in Houston that I could be zoomed in just like this. Happy anniversary, church, and I pray that these words of encouragement will lift your hearts and your spirits as we continue to run this race as well as we have thus far. God bless you, saints of God. There is a word from the Lord. Won't you turn with me in your Bibles right in your virtual spaces, right in your cars. Won't you turn with me via your telephone, your tablet, your iPad to the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel chapter number 7. We're going to look at one verse to lift this encouragement this morning, and that verse is number 12. If you'll focus your attention on 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse number 12. God bless you, St. John's. I'm so proud of you this morning on your third church anniversary. And again, so delighted to be with you. Verse number 12. And I'm reading this morning from the New King James Version of the Bible. Here begins the reading of the word of the Lord. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So far the text. Let me read it one more time. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Saints of God, for the time that is mine, won't you help me pronounce this uh, brief sermon and uh, encouragement to you? This is the title this morning, Shout Ebenezer. Won't you help me to pronounce it? Won't you text somebody, call somebody, reach over on the other side of the car and simply say, Shout Ebenezer. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Lord, teach us to number our days. That is the prayer of the psalmist in Psalm number 90 and verse number 12, who in difficult times exhorts the pursuit of wisdom and perspective, which involves honest reflections about life and its currently harsh circumstances and also pleads for the Lord his God to rescue him and to help his people. All of us, saints of God, are troubled by the circumstances around us. And as the psalmist reminds us, we too need perspective. The pressure of unusual circumstances, sudden changes in our daily routines, and the necessity of developing new skills. All these things require reflection and faithful realignment of our thinking and our work towards both the realities around us and the purposes of the God that we serve. In the midst of the coronavirus outbreak, we were forced to cancel religious services and gatherings across America from New York to Pennsylvania, from Michigan to the Dakotas, from the mid-Atlantic regions to the Midwest, to the, from the far west to the mid-south to the deep south. But faith leaders, saints of God, across the land, to include your pastor, Reverend Connie C.J. Jackson, have stepped into this breach in an effort to comfort and lead their congregations and communities through an increasingly anxious and a very uncertain time. On Sundays, pastors are preaching messages of calm and compassion and direction to empty churches as their congregants watch via live stream. 
via Facebook, via YouTube, and there they are isolated at home by public health warnings and COVID realities that convinced us all to shut our doors. In my own counsel, saints of God, I have shared these words. Every hand we don't shake must be a phone call we make. Every inch and every foot of distance we put between ourselves and another must become a thought about how we can help each other if and when the need should arise. COVID-19, saints of God, is bigger than a headache, a cough, a temperature, or discomfort. It is our formidable enemy. Before we know it, it has overcome loved ones with sickness and some, yes, even with death. With grief, their sickness, and we've grieved their losses, and before we have wiped away the last tear, we hear about another fatality. Most of all, we grieve the fact that we can't be at bedsides to comfort them or at family gatherings that bring us so much comfort. COVID-19, St. John, comes in the midst of, our, uh, of other deadly crises like social unrest, spurred by the death of Houston's native son, George Floyd, natural disasters in the form of storm surges that threaten the lives of many, wildfires spreading like a match in kerosene, all while facing the absolute most important election year of all times, one whereby our very lives depend on it. And yet, you survive. And yet, you live. And yet, St. John's Northwest survives. St. John's, we both congratulate and celebrate you this morning because in the midst of it all, with so many falling by the wayside, you are found faithful, you're found standing, you're found remaining steadfast, abounding in the work of the Lord. You, St. John's, are walking on what most folk drown in. Why? Because in the midst of it all, you have learned the power of prayer. You have learned the purpose of praise. You have learned the secret of seeking, the focus of faith, and the hope of our help. Today, saints of God, we celebrate, for you have turned three years old. And as I raise my three-year-old granddaughter, I see very clearly that the age of three is a wonderful year of discovery, a year where you see a leap in the assertion of initiative and the quest for independence like never before. Three-year-olds don't want our help. Mm -hmm. They say, I can do it, and they mean it. They must learn what they can do and those things they still need help with. I believe that you are where you are today in just three short years because you know what to do and you know what you need God to do and you know how to ask for help. The great theologian Charles Spurgeon says, we cry out to God when we need help because we remember that he's near to all who call him. St. John, we remember that he's a God that never fails us. We remember that his grace is sufficient. We remember that he's present in the time of trouble. St. John's, I bring you greetings from Tampa, Florida, and I want you to know today that we all celebrate together with a resounding testimony through poverty and through wealth and through sickness and through health at home or abroad, on the land or on the sea, in honor or in dishonor, watch this, in perplexity or in joy, in trial or in triumph, in prayer or in temptation. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. It's in this very difficult and strange time we yet hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, and I will help you. Then we declare with the psalmist, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Saints of God, at the time of our text, Israel was facing also a formidable enemy. She was infected, not by COVID, but by sin. They worshiped idols. They practiced ungodly rituals, neglected offerings to the Lord. And just as we have found ourselves, 
saints of God, they needed help. They needed help. They sought help. And they received help. Somebody shout Ebenezer. In, in this passage of scripture, the great prophet Samuel is seeking to bring about revival in Israel. And in so doing, he had spoken to the Israelites about the things that would gain God's attention, the kind of things that would turn God's head, the kind of things that would draw him nigh unto them, the things that literally would bring revival. Those things would include, according to the text, returning to the Lord with all of their heart, removing foreign gods from among them, directing their hearts back to the Lord, serving Jehovah God and him alone. Saints of God, these four basic things would constitute repentance, and Samuel promised that deliverance would come where there was true repentance. So the Israelites were wise. And they sought to meet the conditions for repentance and for deliverance. And now in the process of meeting the conditions, I'm just telling a little bit of the story. Samuel had to gather them together at Mizpah like a good leader. And there he prayed for them. In the meantime, tell somebody the meantime can be a very mean time. In the meantime, the leaders of the Philistines had heard that the Israelites had gathered there. And they believed not that they'd gathered to pray, but that this would be a good opportunity and a good place to finish them off. So they set themselves, the Philistines, towards Mizpah to attack Israel. Now, when the sons of Israel heard that the Philistines were coming, they were afraid. Then they asked their prophet leader Samuel to pray to God and ask him to save them from the hand of of the Philistines. Samuel was a praying prophet. So he did what they asked. He offered a whole burnt offering in worship. And he cried to the Lord on behalf of Israel. And watch this. And the Lord answered him. Now while Samuel was offering these burnt offerings. The Philistines were getting together to battle against Israel. And here we go. But God fought for Israel that day. Scripture records that he thundered against them. That means he overtook them. He overwhelmed them. He thundered against them and confused them on the battlefield so that they were badly beaten right in the eyes of Israel. He beat them, watch this, for them. Let me say that again. He beat them for them. So, so some battles, saints of God, you won't even have to fight. The Lord will fight for you. You just need to pray. And so now, now look what happens. And we're going to encourage you and get on out of your way. But look what happens after the deliverance. Before I get to it, let me just drop this off. Something ought to happen after God shows up. So something ought to happen after God shows up. The Bible says in verse 12, and this is our preach text, Samuel set up a stone between Mizpah and Shin, and he named the rock Ebenezer, saying, Thus far, the Lord has helped us. Samuel teaches us that there ought to be a response to the goodness of God. He teaches us how we ought to celebrate this third anniversary where our collective testimony has been that God has not only shown up, but God has shown out. Well, what does he do? What does he teach us, Bishop? Here we are. First thing he teaches us, he says we ought to commemorate. Uh-huh. Commemorate, meaning to establish, meaning to, meaning to set apart. He set up a stone, the Bible says. Samuel set up a stone between Mizpah and Shin. And saints of God, this was a particular stone. It was a memorial stone. And it was set up to commemorate the victory that God had given them over their mortal and bitter enemies, the Philistines. I know I'm in Tampa, Florida, but I got a feeling that there's something going on in the parking lot right now. And anniversary time is a wonderful time to set up a memorial stone, to set up a marker, to commemorate the victories that God has given us, to commemorate that God from this place has been good to us. 
and commemorate the battles that God has already fought for you. Victory over COVID, victory over your enemies, victory over the economic struggles of so many, over the siege of our faith. Commemorate today that the Lord has helped us. But Samuel, Samuel doesn't just stop there, church. Mm -mm. He didn't just set up a stone, but secondly, he named a stone. So the first point I want you to know, the first thing we got to do is commemorate. Set up the stone. The second thing we need to do is authenticate. Name the stone. To authenticate means that you call it your own. To authenticate means that you make it your own. He named, the Bible says in 12b, he named the rock Ebenezer. After he had set up the stone, he named it Ebenezer. Saints, this name literally means the stone of the help. Lord have mercy. And so we, we, today we commemorate. He set up the stone. We authenticate. He named the stone. And thirdly, we celebrate. He gave testimony of the stone. The Bible says in verse number 12c, Thus far, the Lord has helped us. They were not silent saints of God regarding their help. They were not ignorant of the sources of their help, the source. They were not oblivious to the presence of their help. Thus far, the Lord, they said, has helped us. Now I understand what the old folks were talking about when they said Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of a storm. Saints of God, I'm gonna get out of your way, but not before I tell you that God is and has always been the stone of the specific help. God was the stone of the help that Israel needed when they were down in Egypt. He sent plagues and death and angels through the land, but he fought their battles and delivered them with much spoil. He was the stone of the help when they were wandering through the wilderness. He helped them and fought for them in the battles and in the battle against Am Amalek and Rephidim, Moses sits on a rock while Aaron and Ur hold up his arms. This rock was the foundation of the Israelites' victory. God was the stone of the help when they needed to conquer Jericho and enter into the promised land. When God knocked down the walls, what did they do, saints of God? They broke out in praise. And here we are in the New Testament. Jesus was the stone of our help. He was the stone that the disciples needed when they were whipped and persecuted for preaching in his name. Jesus was the stone of the specific help that the church needed when Peter was in prison for preaching the gospel. Jesus was the stone of the specific help that Paul and Silas needed when they were locked in jail. I believe I heard that there was a praise party going on in the parking lot at St. John Northwest in Houston, Texas. Somebody, anybody, everybody, roll your window down and blow your horn and shout Ebenezer. If Jesus Christ has been the stone of your help, somebody give him a worthy praise. Saints of God, the Lord has been good to us. He has kept us. Yes, he has sustained us. For many, he has healed us. He has delivered us from hurt, harm, and from danger. I need about 10 feet folk to shout Ebenezer so here you are at three years old you have no doubt faced many naysayers who said that it couldn't be done Lord have mercy but God fought for you shout Ebenezer you have faced Satan's opposition to the growth and ongoing perpetuity of your church but shout Ebenezer the stone of the help has helped you and there have been many other enemies and many other battles but Ebenezer the stone of your help has always stepped in and fought your battles had it not been for the Lord on your side surely you would have perished and then saints of God 
there are attacks right now that we don't know about uh, but I urge you to commemorate today set up a memorial marker authenticate today name it yes and celebrate today cause thus far the Lord has helped us I can hear my grandmother say just another day that the Lord has kept me just another day that the Lord has kept me saints of God we have counted on him in the past we have counted on him in the present and his promises should cause us to depend on him in our future and I don't believe that he brought us this far just to leave us Lord have mercy the songwriter said we've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord trusting in his holy word he never failed me yet can't turn around we've come this far by faith somebody shout Ebenezer Connie Jackson shout Ebenezer everybody Shout Ebenezer as I seek to encourage you on this your third anniversary. God continued in verse number 13 to fight for Israel and he's gonna do the same for you. Therefore, we ought to set up a memorial right in the parking lot. Yes, Lord, right here. We ought to name it right here. We ought to celebrate it right here. The stone of the help has helped us. Happy anniversary, St. John's. Happy anniversary to you. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. Commemorate him now. Authenticate him now. And celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Now, you may be with us this morning. You don't know the Lord of the help. But saints of God, might I suggest, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need a friend. Be very sure. Be very sure your ankle holds and grips the rock, the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. He is the one. Hallelujah. That rock is Jesus. Lord have mercy. The only one. Be very sure. Hallelujah. Church, be very sure that your ankle holds and it grips the rock, the solid rock. You would say to me, Bishop, I've never accepted Lord as my Savior, as my King. Well, I want you to know that it's as simple as ABC. A, acknowledge that you're in need of a Savior. B, believe in your heart that He lived, but He was crucified, dead, and buried. And on the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. And see, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And the Bible declares, thou shalt be saved. Well, if you did that, one of the membership or coordinators was certainly from Northwest would take good care of you. Saints of God, I'm about to get out of your way. But again, I want you to feel our love all the way from Tampa, Florida. Pastor Connie C.J. Jackson to the St. John Northwest family. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'm godly proud of you. Happy third anniversary. Go ahead and let the praise spring forth in the parking lot. I love you now. It's Bishop Julia and I'm out. God bless you, saints. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.